Soon after his arrival in South America, Eric Priebke had settled in the pretty alpine city of San Carlos de Bariloche, 1,100 miles southwest of Buenos Aires, in the Argentine Andes. Bariloche is a pristine ski town overlooking a large lake set among pine forests and snow-capped mountains. Its resemblance to Bavaria or Austria is unmistakable, right down to the gingerbread houses and German shops and restaurants. Today, Bariloche still has several hundred Germans mixed in with its population of a hundred thousand people, many of them descendants of the town's German founders who had migrated to the area from neighboring Chile in the 1890s and created a little slice of home out of the wilderness. Priebke had fitted in well in Bariloche, and for decades he had owned and managed a German delicatessen, and had even taken an active public role when he had been elected head of the local German-Argentine Cultural Association. Argentine citizens of the city called Priebke a good neighbour and a person of irreproachable conduct since he had arrived in this country. When Priebke was eventually arrested, after living in Bariloche for almost five decades, over 200 local residents signed a petition calling for his release from custody. Priebke felt so secure in Argentina that he had not even bothered to change his name, nor had he sought Argentine citizenship. Instead, the arrogant former SS captain had retained his German passport and travelled to Europe on several occasions with impunity. He had even visited Italy without anyone being any the wiser. But all of this changed in the early 1990s when another former Nazi, Reinhard Kops, told the American television channel ABC News that Priebke, who was still a wanted man in Italy, was living quietly and comfortably in Bariloche in Argentina. Reinhard Kops was a former officer in the Abwehr, the German military intelligence unit and rival of the Gestapo and he had also escaped from an internment camp in the late 1940s, carrying with him a list of Abwehr agents. Cops had escaped down Bishop Hudal's rat line to South America, where he had become a public relations consultant to Chile's dictator, General Augusto Pinochet, and later to General Alfredo Stroessner in Paraguay. Armed with this information, an ABC reporter named Sam Donaldson had interviewed Priebke in Bariloche, where the elderly German had admitted that he had taken part in the Ardientine Caves massacre in 1944 and that he had personally shot two of the hostages. But Priebke attempted to justify his actions by claiming that he had merely been following Herbert Kapler's orders, orders that came directly from Adolf Hitler, and therefore he was without blame. As with so many other wanted Nazi fugitives, the Nuremberg defence was normally proved to be their first legal tactic when pressed to account for their crimes. The lack of remorse that Priebke showed during the interview was to prove to be his downfall. His arrogance and contempt for those who had died sparked a campaign supported by several powerful Jewish groups to have Priebke arrested and extradited to stand trial for his crimes. Researchers believe that as well as participating in the Ardientine Caves massacre, Priebke had also been involved in the arrest and transportation to Auschwitz of six to 7,000 Italian Jews, and they had also been involved in the torture of Italian political prisoners during interrogations. Argentina came in for some criticism for still allowing Nazi war criminals sanctuary, opening up an uncomfortable old historical wound in the nation. Italy pressed Argentina for Priebke's immediate extradition. The reaction was mixed in Argentina. Many local residents opposed the move, and even the president, Carlos Menem, stated that if Argentina was to extradite Priebke for war crimes, then Britain should extradite former British Prime Minister Baroness Thatcher to Buenos Aires to face charges over the sinking of the cruiser General Belgrano during the 1982 Falklands War when the warship was outside the defined area of engagement. Other Nazi fugitives living in Argentina in 1994 were confronted by reporters, drawing yet more unwanted press attention onto the country. Abraham Kipp, a 77-year-old former Dutch police officer who had been sentenced to death in the Netherlands on 23 counts of murder, said, I don't want to talk about the past. It's all over. Kip had escaped from a Dutch prison in 1949 before he could be put to death, fled to Argentina via a rat line, and had become a citizen in 1953. When asked whether he felt remorse for his crimes as a Nazi collaborator, Kip answered emphatically, What? No. 
Another Nazi living in Buenos Aires, former SS Untersturmführer Willemus Sassen, had known both Dr. Josef Mengele and Adolf Eichmann when they were living in Argentina. 76-year-old Sassen, a Belgian, was not a war criminal, but he had been an SS war reporter and collaborator on both the Eastern and Western Fronts, and a Nazi propagandist. He claimed that Dr. Mengele had been a refined man who loved classical music and that his work was academic to gauge the extremes of physical and mental hardships humans could endure, which was putting it lightly. Sassen died in 2001. The problem for the Argentine authorities was that it began to look as though they were willingly harbouring a wanted Nazi war criminal when such behaviour, even in South America, was no longer acceptable. Priebke had entered Argentina using a false visa supplied by Bishop Hudal at the Vatican made out in the false name of Papa, and he was not an Argentine citizen. Extraditing Priebke was a way that Argentina could show that it was a very different place than the Nazi haven created by President Juan Perón four decades earlier. After considerable Italian pressure, President Menem ordered Priebke's arrest in 1994. However, Due to his advanced age, Priebke was placed under house arrest only. Arresting officer Inspector Adalberto Ibarola had Priebke examined by a doctor who claimed that the old Nazi was suffering from depression since he had publicly admitted his involvement in the Rome massacre. A great deal of soul-searching followed in the Argentine press about the nation's past as a haven for war criminals. Quote, for Argentina which opened its doors to Nazis fleeing post-war Europe. This is the season for exposing war criminals and debating whether 50 years after their crimes they should be brought to justice, wrote Nathaniel C. Cash in the New York Times. Jewish groups were particularly vocal in calling for Priebke's extradition, as several dozen Jews had been shot alongside the other Italian hostages. This man has to be extradited, because extradition represents a no to the idea of impunity, said Beatrice Gurevich Rubel, research director of Proyecto Testimonio, a group studying Argentine national archives for Nazi migration. It is important to delegitimize the idea of obeying orders when it deals with obeying criminal orders. The issue is not the personal punishment of this man, but that he has put on trial in order to condemn what he represents, make people remember what happened, and avoid a repeat of these crimes and conduct, she said. The Italians were to be in for quite a wait before a body was delivered to them, as Priebke's defence lawyers went to work with various delaying tactics. Firstly, they demanded that all of the Italian documents pertaining to the case be translated into Spanish, a process which could have taken up to two years to complete. This request was later overturned by an Argentinian court. Several appeals against extradition were also filed with the court. Priebke's lawyers argued that there was no case to be made against their client since murder charges expire after 15 years. Although this is true regarding basic homicide, war crimes and crimes against humanity are treated differently by the courts. In March 1995, President Menem promised Italy that the case would be closed soon. The Supreme Court of Argentina decided to transfer the Priebkep case back to the local court in Bariloche, opening the possibility of further delays. However, in May 1995, an Argentine federal judge accepted the Italian demand for extradition on the grounds that crimes against humanity could not expire. But in a complete reversal of this legal position, in August, another judge stated that Priebke could not be extradited because the charge had expired. This latest judicial development led to Germany also lodging a request for extradition, the Italians wanted to try Priebke for the entire Ardentine Caves massacre, while the German courts wanted to prosecute Priebke for the personal murders of two of the hostages that he had shot in the back of the head with a machine pistol. Finally, after 17 months of delays and prevarication, the Argentine Supreme Court decided that Priebke would be extradited to Italy. He was put on a direct flight to Rome from Bariloche to a military airfield. Tune in next time to find out how Eric Priebke was finally punished. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.